Hey, it's Steve. Well, if you image the planets with an alt as mount like I do, and you want to create an animation of that planet rotating, basically taking a sequence of images you created from, say, Jupiter uh, over the course of an hour or two, putting them together into a series to make that animation, one thing you have to deal with is field rotation. And here's an example of Jupiter that I recently took. This is a series of about 42 images over the course of 71 or so minutes, each about 90 seconds apart. And you can see, because of the Earth's rotation using an LTAS mount, Jupiter basically rolls over to the right with time. And so I want to correct that with Jupiter staying level as it rotates in the final animation. And so I'll show you one way to do that. And there's different ways you can do this. You can do it programmatically using different software, but I'm gonna basically do it manually in this case and show you how you can do a manual correction of each of the frames so you get a very nice and smooth animation and you don't end up with a janky animation with Jupiter sort of going up and down as it rotates. So the first thing we need to do is look at the start and end times of our images. So the first image was at 4.52 and our last image was at 6.04 roughly. Now this is actually 6.03.8 minutes but we'll just um, say 6.04 and you could be a little bit more exact, and it actually is 71.4 um, minutes if you really calculate it correctly. But we'll just say 72 for now. So opening up that first image in Pixelmator here, we'll go to Transform and see how much we need to rotate the first image. And I'm just going to ballpark this here and say roughly 3 degrees of rotation. So 3, so three degrees uh, in a 357 is where we want to have the first image. Then we'll go to our last image, open that up in Pixelmator as well, and see how much we need to rotate this image. Again, we'll go to Transform and Rotate to the left. And I, I decided when I did this that 331.5 was about what it was when I compared it to the first image to be basically in line. And so anyway, you end up with a 25.5 degree difference from first to last frame. And if we divide that by our 72 minutes, we get 0 0.354 degrees per minute of, of time. And so now basically all we have to do is find the time between each image and that will tell us how much we need to rotate. So I'm gonna do an image here that I haven't done yet. This is at 547.7. .7. I'm gonna open that up in Pixelmator. So here's our image at 547.7. .7. So, so if we take the time here at 547.7, .7, and subtract our starting time of 452.4. That's equal to 55.3 minutes. And then we'll take 55.3 times 0 0.354 degrees per minute. And we get 19.3. Five, eight degrees. Now we do have to add three degrees to that because the first image was rotated by three degrees and so we get 22.58 degrees. But because we're rotating to the left we have to go 22.58 you know from 360 and so the final rotation is going to be 360 minus 22.58 degrees which works out to 337.42 degrees. And so if we click on our image and go to transform, and then we can type in here 337.42 degrees, and that should be aligned evenly with all the other images. But because we have rotated to the left, we're not missed, we don't have a solid black background. And so this is a previous image that I did. So I'll just grab this black box that I made and just paste that on there and then shift that behind the image of Jupiter. So then we can save this as a TIFF image. And 
And then we can find the one we just exported here. And then I'm doing some denoising in Topaz T-Noise. And so this is the uh, before. So this is the before and the after here on the right. And that's just cleaning up the noise there, which makes it perhaps look a little bit better, but you do lose some data. So I'm gonna basically keep one in both formats. And so I'm saving that. And so I'll just grab a handful of the images I just completed and I'll open that in preview. And so if I grab a handful of these and just kind of scroll through them in, in preview, you can kind of see that the rotation is actually nice and even and it's not being you know, janky and shifting up and down as you go from one frame to the next. So when this gets all put together, it should make a nice smooth rotation with Jupiter level the whole way. So anyway, here's a before and after of the Jupiter animation. You can see on the right now, everything is nice and level. But anyway, this is one way that you can correct your animations if you are using an Altaz mount. Just, you know, basically calculate the difference in time between the first and your last image, and then see how much you need to rotate the image between the first and the last, you know, divide that from the, with the time, and you can see how much to rotate each individual image based on what time it is, and then you can basically get everything nice and even and get a nice smooth rotation. So it's a little bit of work to do it that way, but it is certainly an option if you don't want to do this programmatically, um, using command line tools and that kind of thing to rotate your images or using other uh, software that can do the same thing for you. Okay, so now let's look at another way that you can rotate images, uh, whether it's something like this for an animation or any kind of image that you want to rotate from the command line in a terminal window, at least if you're using Mac OS, and certainly there's probably similar uh, options available uh, from Windows using the command window as well. But here we'll look at Mac OS because that's what I'm using currently. And so we'll sh I'll show you here an easy way to rotate your images using software that's already built into Mac OS, so nothing to add on. And you can quickly do some of these uh, quick rotations of your images to get them aligned. So here's my directory of all the images that needed to be rotated. I, I moved the ones that I had actually done with Pixelmator into that rotated directory up here. But we'll go ahead and open up a terminal window and we will navigate to the directory that we have all the images in. And I'm just referencing the path here at the bottom of my, my window. Okay, and then we can just do an LS and get the listing of all of the images that are here. So say you want to rotate this image here at 539.6. You can highlight it, do a command C to copy, and then you can just type in open and do command V for that file and it will pop up and preview that uh, that image. So you can see what it, you know, what, what the image is that you're working on and make sure that, you know, everything is okay with it and it's ready to be rotated. So now if you want to rotate it again using the formula that I had created before of 0.345 degrees per minute of time, we can look at the time at 539.6 minutes. And so basically 39.6 minutes uh, plus eight minutes because we started at uh, 452. And so it's 44.6 minutes since we started times 0.345. That gives us 15.39 degrees. We need to add three degrees because uh, the first image was three degrees out of horizontal. So we want to rotate 18.39 degrees. So we'll do 360 minus 18.39 degrees. And that, so we want to end up at 341.61. And so all we have to do here is go back to the command line Type in SIPS, S-I-P-S minus R, our angle that we want at 341.61 degrees. And then I can still do command V because I, you know, that has the path or that has the name of the image that we had opened up earlier. Hit enter and it's going to rotate that. If I click back on the preview window, it will show the image has been rotated to horizontal. So, so that's another way that you can do the image rotation is from the command line. And that's another fast and efficient way to do that rotation of your images. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Bye.